Welcome to my mini video on enemy flinching in Spiral Knights. Also known as staggering, flinching an enemy is something every player does very often. But what does it actually mean to flinch an enemy? Well, flinching is when an enemy is cancelled from any animation it's currently in, and in some cases, knocked to the ground. Here's a good example of flinching. Shooting these Kremlin Scorchers with my Magnus is causing them to get flinched over and over and thrown onto their backs. Even though flinching enemies is so common, the game doesn't do anything to teach the player about it at all. I'd like to clear up any confusion surrounding enemy flinching, and show you how to use it in your runs to improve both your survivability and knowledge of the game. As I've said before, enemy manipulation is super important in Spiral Knights, but how do you know what attacks flinch enemies and when? These are the two things I'm hoping to make clear in this video. Even though flinching is just one mechanic on its own, there are two entirely different ways to flinch enemies. The first one being the player-induced flinch, and the other one being the enemy-induced flinch. Let's talk about player-induced flinching first. There are two very important things to keep in mind when talking about player-induced flinches. One is the weapon used, and the other being damage dealt to the enemy. Damage dealt is important, as for this method of flinching to work, the enemy's health has to meet a certain damage threshold first. For zombies, the damage threshold is around 40% of their maximum HP, but this varies for different enemies. For instance, a Gorgos is very low, at around 5%, and a Chromolisks is at around 20%. Back to the zombie now. The first step is to use any weapon to lower the target's HP to the threshold. For this zombie, I lower it slightly past its 40% threshold. Once the health gets to or passes this threshold, using a flinch inducing attack will execute the flinch. But what's a flinch inducing attack? This is where the weapon used comes into play. Flinch inducing attacks include Magnus basic attacks, expanded pulsar shots, torto fist punches, finishing hits of a sword combo, or almost any charge attack. It's important to note that the threshold will get reset if you wait too long after your initial damage to flinch the enemy. For instance, let's say I deal around 10% of this zombie's HP in one hit. As soon as this damage is dealt, a timer of about 2 seconds starts. Once the timer is up, the threshold will lose the damage dealt, and I'll have to damage the enemy again in order to meet this new threshold. If the threshold is low enough, a second weapon isn't even needed. In the case of these devlights low thresholds, I'm able to use only my Magnus to continuously meet the next threshold with every basic attack. This lets me easily chain the flinches and keep the devlight in place. If you would like to know each enemy's specific flinch threshold, I'll have a link in the description to a spreadsheet detailing every monster's rough flinch thresholds. Keep in mind these numbers aren't exact, but just approximate. The second type of flinching is enemy-induced flinching. Enemy-induced flinches depend on an enemy performing a certain action instead of your own damage. As an example, a zombie can be flinched by any weapon during its breath or biting attacks. Here I'm able to use a single shot from an Umbra driver to flinch a zombie during its breath attack. Memorizing every enemy's weak points is great when using this kind of flinch. A couple more well-known examples are how Scuttlebots can be flinched during their attacks, how Grievers can be flinched during their dive attacks, how Devlights can be flinched during their throwing attacks, or even how Mecha Knights and Phantoms can be flinched during their combo attacks. All of these attacks are very deadly, and knowing when to interrupt an enemy can almost always save your life. Making sure that you're aware of each of these vulnerable points in enemies' behaviors greatly increases your chances at survival in every mission you run. If you want a complete list of flinchable attacks, the spreadsheet in the description details them as well. I hope this short little video taught you something new about Spiral Knights. If you're having trouble with flinching, have any questions in general, or think I missed something, please let me know. If you have a suggestion on another mechanic that you'd like to see covered in its own video, I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching.